Bosnia, a country we know from TV as the scene of a gruesome war. The war is now over, and this country has since disappeared from the headlines. Eight years have passed since the Dayton Peace Accords were signed. I have come back to find out what this peace looks like. The images from my trip in 1996 are still fresh in my mind. Peace, at the time, was barely three months old. Bosnia, March 1996. The war is over. The ensuing peace still shaky. I-4, an international implementation force, was deployed to prevent the resurgence of violence. They patrolled the roads, granted journalists permission to film, authorised routes. The country was tense, the streets still unsafe. The country looked deserted, whole regions depopulated, villages plundered and destroyed, houses gutted. Bosnia, May 2003. Our journey begins just beyond the eastern border to Serbia. Along the highway, a thriving free trade zone, a shopping mall with a strange sounding name for the Balkans, Arizona Market. You can find everything here that money can buy. Hawkers, fences, smugglers and beggars included. Trade in stolen goods is booming. The business, we learn, is firmly in the hands of former Serb leader and war criminal Radovan Karadzic and the Mafia. Cigarettes, bootleg videos and CDs pour in from Serbia. But the days of stalls and small-time peddlers are numbered. Big business is moving in, with a wholesale outlet now under construction. Arizona Market got its name from the roadmap issued to the International Peacekeeping Forces. All major roads in Bosnia are named after states of the USA, so that the American soldiers can find their way around this country. U.S. military intervention finally put an end to the bloodbath in Southeast Europe after three gruesome years of war. It was American President Bill Clinton who stopped the murder of Bosnian Muslims by imposing the Dayton Peace Plan. 20,000 U.S. soldiers were sent to Bosnia in November 1995. The international community deployed an additional 40,000 soldiers to enforce the peace particularly in eastern Bosnia, close to the Serbian border, the scene of heavy fighting during the war. Borazde, Zepa, Srebrenica were declared UN safe areas to protect the Muslim population. Today, Srebrenica, a little town in eastern Bosnia, stands for the worst massacre in Europe since World War II. Potokari, eastern Bosnia. March 31st, 2003. Muslims from throughout Bosnia gather here, just a stone's throw away from Srebrenica, to hold Jinatsa, a Muslim burial ceremony for the victims of the massacre. Paddy Ashdown, the high representative of the international community, has come from Sarajevo. Known as the Viceroy of Bosnia by the Western press, he wields more power in this country than the Bosnian government. These women from Srebrenica have had to wait for eight years to bury the remains of their loved ones. No, 
Učitam u ručne red ništa. Hvala Bog kad smo našli vuda i ukupaj da im se znao gdje im je grob jer šta ću više. Jer da sam ostala nimam nikoga više jer te. Nikoga nimam. Srebrenica. Bosnian Muslims accounted for 75% of its inhabitants. Contested and under siege, Srebrenica became a UN-declared safe area. The Serbs attacked Srebrenica in July 1995. Under the command of General Ratko Mladic, the Bosnian Serb army, units of the Yugoslavian army and armed irregulars took the city. The Muslim residents had fled to Potokari and Bratnak. Twenty-seven thousand people took refuge from the Serbs in the UN peacekeeping camp in Potokari, where 400 UN soldiers were headquartered. The Dutch battalion of the UN offered no resistance. NATO airstrikes failed to appear. Mladic had complete control over the fate of 27,000 Muslims. <laughs> Serb cameramen covers every move, while Serbian TV aired broadcasts meant to show the orderly ethnic cleansing of the region. Broadcasts of the evacuation of women and children are seen around the world. The fate of the men was revealed much later by tales of survivors, by American satellite photos, and by an amateur video taken by a Serbian soldier. Men and boys were taken to remote locations where they were shot and thrown into mass graves prepared in advance. Some 7,000 to 10,000 unarmed Muslim men attempted to reach Tuzla through the woods. They were shelled by Serb artillery and hunted down by Serbian soldiers. Those who surrendered were shot in the woods. The last pictures of Rama Oganovic taken by a Serb soldier on July the 12th, 1995. The wait continues for scores of women. Mass graves have yet to be discovered. Eight years after the worst tragedy of the war, the remains of the first 600 to be identified are buried today, the 31st of March, 2003. The nation's president has come from Sarajevo. The spiritual leader of Bosnian Islam presides over the burial ceremony. The high representative will give a speech and read a letter from the UN Secretary General, a message that Bosnia and the entire world should hear. The words he has written. The United Nations remembers the horrible events of Srebrenica with the deepest pain. We ask to ensure that such crimes are never again repeated, that justice is carried out fully through the work of the International Criminal Tribunal for the former Yugoslavia. Many more graves have yet to be discovered. A memorial for the more than 7,000 victims of the largest massacre in Europe since the Second World War will be erected here. A long journey for the victims of Srebrenica. From the anonymity of mass graves to a single grave with a single name. In this laboratory in Tuzla, the nameless dead are given back their identities. The names of fathers, sons and husbands that relatives can mourn. Anthropologists and forensics.